What's up guys, it's BT here, and this is the review of the new Ponage Ultra Custom Symmetrical Mouse. Now, last year I felt like the ergonomic version of this mouse was one of the most underrated mice of 2020. It flew under the radar for a lot of people, but it was a great mouse. And at the time I said it was gonna be the future of gaming mice, and we've kind of seen this happening over this past year, as companies are starting to take notice and moving towards this swappable back shell model. And on that one, you also got to take out the wireless battery. It was just super customizable. You got to change the DPI button. You got to take out the removable battery if you want to go wired over wireless. There was just a lot of customizations that happened with the ergonomic version of this mouse. And it came in a shape that we were all looking for, the EC2B. So since Zowie has taken a back seat, Ponage just took it upon themselves to make an S2 type shape. So if you guys are coming from that mouse, odds are you're probably gonna love this mouse as well. Also guys, stick around to the end of the video because I will be telling you guys how you can win an Ultra Ponage custom symmetrical mouse. This is at a competitive price, especially when you look at Zowie mice, which are running for like $70. This is $80 and it's wireless. And if you look at other wireless mice in this category, you're looking at like the model of wireless, which is also $80. You're looking at a Razer Viper Ultimate, which is 100 to 150, depending on which day you catch it on. And the Logitech G Pro Superlight is running at 150 big ones almost double the price of this mouse. So you're getting a good value here when it comes to wireless performance. So with the Ultra Custom Symmetrical, there's so many different shells that you can swap out. They have two different versions, one with a honeycomb side and one with the solid side. They also have the honeycomb back and they also have the removable front mouse one and two buttons as well. So the honeycomb side version is my least favorite. That's because it collects a lot of oils from your hand and it just becomes slippery over time. And that's why I waited to put out this review so I can see these little nuances of this mouse. And with the honeycomb back, it just doesn't feel like an S2. But if you get these solid sides and you put that solid back on there, which are both matte, it starts to feel like an S2. Like, let me tell you, it feels spot on. And the weight differential between going honeycomb versus having the solid is only about one to five grams, which is not a whole lot and I couldn't really tell the difference when I had honeycomb and when I had the solid shape. So my recommendation right off the bat, if you're planning on getting this mouse, just go with the solid sided mouse. Because a lot of the way, the, the way you're really gonna change the weight of this mouse is if you remove the wireless battery, but this mouse should be used wireless, let's be real. But one design change that they did from the original Ergo to this one is now that they made the two pin connector deeper into the mouse. So it's really hard to remove the removable battery now. And to take out the battery, you have to unscrew this little platform and then you have to pull out the two pin connector like all crazy and then pull it out and then once it's out it's very hard to get back in let me tell you so i think they did this to really discourage people from actually taking out this battery this time around unlike the first time where it was near the front opening of the mouse and like i said i'm okay with that if i was to use this mouse i would use it wireless but they do have some cool options when it comes to using this wired in one of my latest videos where i talk about upgrading mice i talked about having a usb connector to the front of the mouse and that's what they've done here they've released different colors of mouse cables and allowed you to just easily swap in between colors it's such a cool idea companies just need to do this already and it just makes more sense for new people to the hobby you don't have to open up your mouse you po might possibly mess something up it just makes it a lot easier so I really do like that they did that now you can get this mouse down to about 68 grams if you take out that battery uh, because that's where most of the weight is coming from but since we have a wireless s2 pretty much Let's just use a wireless. Now the PTFE feet is one thing that I really noticed with this mouse. They made the mouse feet really thick and they're super smooth, almost too smooth. The glide on these is noticeable if you're coming from something else. When I switched over from the super light to this mouse, I was blown away by just how slippery this was on my hand. Now they also come with two other sets in the box, a thicker set and a thinner set as well, if you're interested in that. Now the dimensions of this mouse kind of puts it at less than an S2. It's almost like an S3. Now, I don't know if you guys are following me on Twitter, but I actually made a post that we needed a wireless S3. And I feel like this shape is pretty much the S3. It's a little bit shorter and not as wide, but the hump stays the same as the S2. I almost can't use the S2 anymore because it just feels so big compared to today's mice, but, but this mouse feels great in the hand, especially if you're a claw grip user. Now, if you're trying to palm this mouse, it's not gonna happen because the hump is so big and it's near the back. If you want a fingertip grip, it's great because these little hips really help with your pinky and your thumb to control the mouse. It's a medium-sized mouse. My hands are at 19 by 8.5 centimeters 
centimeters, I consider myself a medium handed user. Even though this mouse is a little bit smaller, since you're gonna be claw gripping this mouse, you're still gonna have a little bit more room because your fingers are gonna be curled up. So I believe this mouse could work for people up to about 22 centimeters. I really love this shape. It felt like I was right at home while using it. Everything about this mouse feels like the S2, especially if you get the one with the closed sides and the closed back. Really impressed with the build quality on this mouse so far. It has this great hump on the back and just fits my hand like a glove. I'm actually really surprised another company hasn't made this shape already. Uh, they kind of let Ponage come and kick through the door and just make this amazing shape before anybody else did. One thing I forgot to mention is you can actually change the colors of the shell. So this is also moddable because they have a bunch of different colors that you can change your mouse out to as well. Now let's talk about the mouse buttons because this is where Zowie ran into a lot of trouble before. They were getting better, but then they kind of just stopped making mice at the moment. So Ponage split off the mouse one and two from the front of the shell, which is really nice because that's what we were asking Zowie for for years now. It makes the mouse one and two crisper to click. There's very little pre-travel like you have on the Zowie mice. The side buttons aren't really that light, but once you press them in, there's a very satisfying click there. You also have the DPI button up top, which feels great. And the biggest thing for me is the scroll wheel. It's miles ahead of what Zowie's putting out those hard clicks. They still give me nightmares. They still give me nightmares. So having a light, scroll wheel on an S2 shape is heavenly. All right, so let's drop a sound test of this mouse. We'll compare it versus the S2. Let's drop that sound test right about now. Also, they were supposed to put some spacers into the box in between the mouse button and the shell, but, but they were not included in my box. So I've heard other people not receiving theirs as well. So I think this was left out, but that was just made so you can make your buttons crispier. There's less travel, things like that. Really interesting idea. Ponage has a lot of great ideas when it comes to customizing their mouse. I just wish that it was in the box. All right, so moving on to the sensor. It has the 333 five sensor. Now tracking with this and doing flick shots was amazing. It felt great. The one con of this mouse, and it was throwing me off because I thought the mouse was kind of spinning out, but it wasn't. It's actually that the lift off distance is really, really high. I'm gonna throw up an example on the screen right now showing just how high it is. Like my mouse is not touching the mouse pad whatsoever. It's got the thick feet on there. So you know the distance is already pretty far. So you know that lift off distance has to be pretty high. And I'm able to track it nicely. I actually was going around in Valorant and just tracking people with it. And I was actually killing people while having my mouse floating. So that's how good the tracking is at a high distance. So that can really throw you off if you're trying to do flick shots or reset your mouse. I was getting like, I just felt like somebody was knocking my mouse to the side every time I put it down. And I'm a person that isn't too sensitive to a high lift off distance. So you know when this bugs me, that it's pretty high. And right now there's no way to change this in the software. Hopefully they add that in the near future because right now the only thing standing between me and this mouse getting more playtime and possibly becoming a main is that lift off distance. The wireless battery is rated at 66 hours, which is pretty competitive with today's gaming mice. Like the Superlight is 70, the Model O wireless is 71 hours. So right in line with what we've been seeing. And with RGB on, it's only about 40 hours. They also have a wireless dongle that's near the back of the mouse which you pull out and then you put into the little usb receiver i really like when companies allow you to put the little dongle into the mouse because i lose mine all the time for other mice when it's not like that but the battery does last and the sleep timer on this is pretty good to preserve battery life so the software allows you to reassign buttons the pulling rate battery life it changed the dpi lighting effect so if you want to go from different dpis you can do that and it'll actually show you an indication of what it is on the scroll wheel you can make macros. You can also change the RGB of the entire mouse. Just to conclude this video, I love what Ponage is doing with this mouse. This customizable shells and mouse one and twos and changing the distance with the spacers on the mouse one and two, even though mine weren't uh, included in the box. It's really exciting to see. And it really 
as a reviewer excites me for the future of gaming mice because this is what i want to see so yeah if they find a way to change the lift off distance on this 33 35 sensor i think this is going to be a mainstay it could be top five uh, especially with this shape because it's amazing and it's wireless especially if they come out before the burst pro wireless yeah this is going to be a problem but until then i think that the lift off distance kind of holds this mouse back now that being said i do have two extra ones left over that you guys can try i have a white solid and a black one with holes if you guys are interested so to enter this you have to be subscribed and then also the next thing you have to do is tell me a joke. And the first two people that get me to laugh, get a mouse. Easy enough, all right? It has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.